Azerbaijan's relation with the European uh, Union is one of the important directions of Azerbaijan's foreign policy. And Azerbaijan and the European Union are cooperating in many different spheres. And Azerbaijan is also an important partner of the European Union in terms of the trade. And also biggest investor in Azerbaijan are mainly EU countries. And European Union and Azerbaijan are closely cooperating in the security, transport and energy field. And especially in the energy field, European Union and Azerbaijan are strategic partners. We see it is particularly important that in the middle of summer, Azerbaijan gas delivered via TANAP and TAP project will physically be on the territory of the European Union and we will finalize a final portion of the TAP project. And we are also launched the process of uh, working uh, on the new partnership agreement with the European uh, Union. And still, uh, the negotiation process is going on between EU and Azerbaijan. And there are certain fundamental areas. We have a little bit different views, but both sides with a constructive engagement, working together to narrow this gap. Almost 90% of the text of the agreement is finalized. But there are energy issues and also trade issues. We are looking for more uh, engagement from the side of the European Union that they shouldn't take a preferential position, or in other words, uh, offensive trade approach with regard to uh, the agreement. And based on that understanding, we do believe that we can move forward. Because for Azerbaijan, it's also strategically uh, important that we have our own internal reform process and own economic priorities and initiatives. And the agreement should be designed in a sense that it should meet requirements of both, side, both sides. And in the meantime, it should be mutually beneficial approach. My president highlighted in general Azerbaijan's relations with the European Union and Azerbaijan's cooperation in many different spheres with the European Union. As regards an Eastern partnership, and my president once again mentioned that in general it's in a framework that brings together different countries and we are also part of this process to be engaged. We are participating in the Eastern Partnership Program. Currently, there are some talks and discussions about the further development of Eastern Partnership. But for us, inclusiveness in this process and also not to uh, rank the partners are extremely important. And also, uh, Eastern Partnership should be designed in a sense that partner countries' particular needs and requirements should be met. And it also should be tailor-made. Because from Azerbaijan perspective, and we see uh, Eastern Partnership as a general framework, and we are not asking any kind of donor support or any kind of as financial support within the Eastern Partnership. What we are asking by using this wider framework so that uh, we can build up further cooperation uh, with the European Union. In general, Silk Road concept resonates well with Azerbaijan's own perception because Azerbaijan was historically located on the ancient Silk Road. Therefore, along this road, along the Caspian Sea, we are building different connectivity mechanisms with our Central Asian partners. It's not only about the transportation, it's also about the information and communication technologies. Along the Caspian Sea, Azerbaijan, with our Central Asian partners, with China and some other uh, partnering countries involved, are building new fiber optic line as well. We are working on the maritime, sea and air component of the Silk Road. Simply things are going well, and we also take note that there is a big potential for trade turnover between China and European Union. As a mid-corridor, Azerbaijan can play its role and especially with the commissioning and currently fully operational baku tbilisi cars railway system, we see that we can do a lot with our EU partners. Along with the North Source Axis, uh, Azerbaijan uh, with Iran and Russia tries uh, to build within a connectivity line. Azerbaijan's railway system is uh, well integrated and connected with the Russian railway system. And now we are working with our Iranian partners that we can bring uh, goods uh, from the uh, wider Indian Ocean to the northern part of the Europe within a short range of the time. These are the opportunities that we are currently working on our partners and we see a good progress. Last year we have celebrated 25th anniversary of the Partnership for Peace program that Azerbaijan joined in 1994. Since then, 
cooperation with the NATO played an important role in uh, security reform and defense reform in Azerbaijan. Education and training and exercises provided by different NATO programs were important instruments in Azerbaijan's defense building and defense reform process. Currently, Azerbaijan is considered as a reliable and committed partner by NATO. And I'm proud to say that today, Azerbaijan soldiers, shoulder to shoulder, to NATO allied and partner countries are serving in Afghanistan against you know, terrorism and trying to provide and bring peace and security to this country. Azerbaijan also plays an important role as a transit and logistic hub for the transportation of life-saving uh, goods uh, for NATO allied partner countries. We also see that there is a uh, further potential uh, to develop political consultation and dialogue and Within the visit to Brussels, we had a 29 plus 1 format, that NATO plus Azerbaijan format of discussion on general political and regional issues, including the Armenia-Azerbaijan Nagorno-Karabakh conflict that I had a good chance to brief NATO colleagues and friends from the partner and allied countries. We have taken a positive note about the European Union's principled and firm position with regard to territorial integrity and sovereignty and inviolability of internationally recognized borders of Azerbaijan. Particularly, it has been reaffirmed in the partnership priorities document that has been signed between EU and Azerbaijan. And we also see continuation of this policy, and especially in the implementation uh, of the uh, Common Foreign and Security Policy document of the European Union that has been endorsed in the Parliament of the European Union. It's an abounding principle that says that EU supports territorial integrity of all Eastern partners. For us, it's critically important, and we appreciate that position. And we do think that these core fundamental principles that are deriving from the Helsinki Final Act and international law should be, on a non-selective manner, to be applied to all conflicts and including with respect to the all Eastern partnership countries. And we would like to see also further continuation of this policy and seeing also reflected in uh, EU positions in some other different forums, as in the OSCE, UN, in some other forums, because Territorial integrity is a must for every and each country. As it was said by my president, unfortunately last year was a lost year with regard to the resolution of the conflict. We can't see any particular movement with regard to the resolution of the conflict. And on the contrary, we have seen counterproductive, destructive policy by Armenia. Armenian side try to change the format of the negotiation process. Nevertheless, we have already established format of the negotiation process. Armenia, Azerbaijan are conflicting parties, and OSCE means group co-chairs, are mediators. Then Armenian side, at the very level, very high level, said that new territories, new wars, no inch of territory back. And finally, Armenian prime minister in occupied Khankan, the city of Azerbaijan, said that Nagorno-Karabakh is Armenia. It is a pure annexation of the territory of sovereign state at the level of the leadership of one country against another one. It's a completely unacceptable. It was element of not just undermining, destroying the entire negotiation process. We have communicated this message to co-chair countries, to the international community. Nagorno-Karabakh is Azerbaijan, an exclamation. It symbolizes 30th anniversary of Black January events that happened in Azerbaijan. It was still Soviet time, and Soviet leadership, Mikhail Sergeyevich Gorbachev, declared state of emergency in Azerbaijan, and he deployed 26,000 Soviet forces to Azerbaijan with the sole purpose to crush the will of Azerbaijani people who sought freedom and independence. And sole purpose also was to intimidate in an indiscriminate manner tanks and soldiers used force against civilian protesters. As a result of which 140 people killed, 700,000 have been wounded. They were just innocent civilians and seeking and demanding freedom, 
independence and justice. It was an element of collective punishment by Soviet leadership. It wasn't a war crime, it was a crime against humanity.